Hey everybody, Mr. J here at Organized Biology. Today it's Punnett Square 101. By the end of this video, you will understand the basics of Punnett Squares and then be able to apply this new knowledge that you're gonna gain to every other example of different crazy Punnett Squares like multiple alleles, incomplete dominance, X-linked traits, and those types of things. But we have to understand the basics first. So stick with me, it'll help you out a lot. So first off, our bodies are made of cells. These are 30 trillion tiny little units inside your body right now that all have certain shapes and sizes and structures to help them with certain functions, okay? And they all read from the same little manual that we call DNA. DNA is the blueprint of how those cells know how to build themselves, right? How your skin cell builds itself, how your heart cells build themselves, etc. okay? So they need a blueprint in order to understand how to make it, and that is called DNA. So I want you to think of DNA as the blueprint of your cells. This DNA is found in the nucleus of your cells. So if this is any cell of your body, besides your red blood cells, any cell of your body, it will contain a nucleus that will contain DNA, which is these long stringy like structures that are literally the blueprints. So these are found in the nucleus of your cells. Awesome. But whenever we have a blueprint, right, you don't just have scattered pages everywhere, right? They're organized. They're organized in these sort of chapters or segments, right? The way your DNA is organized in the same way is through chromosomes. I like to think of chromosomes as the different chapters of DNA. So I want you to think of chromosomes as chapters of your DNA. So just like a recipe book, for example, each chapter is going to code for a different meal, right? And in this case, they're going to code for different proteins or different traits, okay? Now, I want you to remember, though, that you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, okay? You're going to say, Mr. Jackson, wait, pairs? Don't we just need, like, one chapter for each, but we have two of one chapter? Exactly, okay? So this is where it gets complicated. In your DNA, you have one, two of each chromosome type. So for example, let's say that this black is chromosome one. So these little black guys are chromosome one. But you notice that there's two of them, right? You have two chromosome ones. Well, where did you get these chromosome ones from? You know the answer. One of these is from your mom, and one of these is from your dad. So this is the basis of heredity, right? Inheriting traits from your parents. It's by gaining basically one chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad. They mix together and you have a certain trait based on that, okay? So chromosomes are just the chapters. You have 23 pairs of them. 22 of them are what, call, are what called autosomes. They're called autosomes. And the last pair are called the sex chromosomes, which will be that X paired with Y or X paired with X. And we'll talk about that a little later on in a different video. Now, I'm talking about traits here, right? So these bits of DNA organized in chromosomes contain different segments within each. So for example, if this is like chromosome... 11, that chapter is going to contain different components than this chapter, right? Because this is chromosome 1, chapter 1. This is chromosome 11, chapter 11, right? So different bits of DNA are going to have different codes. And that's where we get into genes, okay? So genes are segments of DNA that code for proteins. You may have heard proteins in your class and you may be confused like what the heck is a protein? Well proteins build every single one of your cells. They're the tiny little macromolecule components that build your cells, make your skin skin-like, make your heart heart-like, your muscles muscle-like, right? But you will hear this in class as traits. So proteins determine traits of your body like hair color, height, those types of things, okay? Now what I want you to get from this is that there will be different genes located on different chromosomes. So each gene is on a specific chromosome. So for example, maybe on chromosome one, there's like a hair color gene, right? 
Maybe on chromosome 11, there's something dealing with your blood cells or something along those lines, right? And that's actually true. We're going to get to that in a second. But different bits of chromosomes will have different genes, which will code for different traits, okay? Now, I mentioned hair color and I mentioned blood types and those types of things. Well, how do we determine what trait we have, right? That's the big question. How do we know what trait this cell is going to show or this person made of the 30 trillion of them is going to show? That's where alleles come in, okay? So stick with me here. Alleles are variations of a gene, okay? So variations of a gene. Well, think about it. If chromosome one, let's just make a really basic example. You have two chromosome ones, and let's say that on chromosome one, there's a hair color gene. So let's say that the hair color gene is located maybe on this little particular part of chromosome one. Equal and opposite on both chromosome one from mom, chromosome one from dad, and that's your hair color genes. Well, you get one variation of that gene from your mom and one variation of the gene from your dad. They might be slightly different, right? And this is where alleles come in. So we show alleles with letters, okay? So you've usually seen big A, and little a, okay? Now this designates that big A will be a dominant allele, and little a will be what's called a recessive allele. Okay, now we got some terms here. Dominant, the definition of if you get a dominant allele, that trait, that protein is going to be expressed. It's going to be shown, okay? Whereas if you get a recessive allele, okay, this one might be shown, it might not. So let's give an example. Let's say that A, big A, we'll say codes for brown hair. Whereas this recessive one codes for blonde hair. Very basic example, right? Well, how do we know if you're going to have brown or blonde hair? Well, you're going to say, well, based on which allele we got, yes? But remember, we have two chromosome ones, right? So think about it. You will have one allele from mom, one allele from dad. So let's say, for example, this person has a big A from mom and a big A from dad. Well, if they have two dominant alleles, both coding for brown hair, boom, this person is going to have brown hair, right? Absolutely. Now, what if dad gave a recessive? Well, now we have a dominant brown and a recessive blonde. But remember, the recessive can get masked. It can get covered up if it's with a dominant allele. So in this case, big A, little a, this is called a genotype, by the way, is going to be a brown-haired person. So you've probably figured out, well, how do we get a blonde-haired person, right? Well, to get a blonde-haired person, we have to have both recessive. And that is going to determine that the person will have blonde hair. Both recessive alleles, that's called homozygous recessive. Just some terms to learn. Homozygous recessive means you have two of the same recessive allele. This is called heterozygous, big A, little a. So you have like different alleles. So it's heterozygous. And then if you were big A, big A, like I mentioned earlier, this is called homozygous dominant. And again, that would code for brown hair. Awesome. So this is the basics of Punnett squares, because we have to understand this in order to move over to this side where we actually draw out the Punnett squares, okay? So let's move on, and I'm going to give you an exa another example, actually, of sickle cell anemia, okay? So what's sickle cell anemia? Well, this is looking at a gene on chromosome 11 that codes for what's called hemoglobin. Okay, hemoglobin is a protein. Okay, remember protein, gene codes for a trait or a protein. And hemoglobin is a protein that gives a blood cell the nice round donut shaped shape that we all know and love. So if you have a good hemoglobin protein, you will make good circular blood cells. But 
If you don't have hemoglobin, so say you do not have hemoglobin, well now your red blood cells will turn into this sort of half moon shape. They will be sickled. So that's if you do not have a functioning hemoglobin gene or hemoglobin protein, right? Now, let's move on from this. So we're looking at chromosome 11, a gene on that chromosome. So let's take some parents. And with Pundit squares, all we're doing is we're determining, hey, what percentage of the kids, the offspring, will have certain traits based on what the parents had. Does that make sense? So Pundit squares are showing basically the percentage of traits that will be expressed in the offspring, the kids, based on what the parents have. So I'm gonna give you a basic example. Let's say that for this example, the hemoglobin protein is a dominant allele. So we'll say big, uh, we'll do a different one. Big H codes for a normal hemoglobin. So if this, if any people have a big H, they're going to have a normal red blood cell. Awesome. But if they have a little H, this is going to be an abnormal hemoglobin which will lead potentially to the sickle shaped, right? So big H, normal hemoglobin, it's dominant, whereas little h is abnormal hemoglobin, which is recessive. Okay, so let's take two parents. Let's say mom does not have an abnormal hemoglobin and she has a genotype, another term, the lettering, of big H, little h, okay? You know that she has a normal hemoglobin because she has a big H, right? But she also has a res recessive abnormal hemoglobin allele, but it's not showing up, remember, because it's recessive. So she has a normal red blood cell, even though she does carry the recessive. And now let's say dad also has a big H, little h. So what's he going to show? Well, the same thing as mom, right? Normal red blood cell. Now. When they have kids though, remember, the kid themselves only has one of each allele, right? So think about it. When mom's passing on one of the alleles and when dad's passing on one of the alleles, they can only pass on one. If mom passed on both of hers and dad passed on one of his, now you got three alleles, you don't know what to do with them, okay? So we can only pass on one of either allele. Okay, so this is how we actually draw Punnett squares out. What we do is we take mom's genotype, so the lettering, big H, little h, and we're going to separate it out. Let's see if I can draw this properly. We're going to separate these out on both sides of the top of the Punnett square. So I will put her big H here, and I'll put her little h right here. So I separated out her alleles. This is the law of independent assortment you may have heard in class. For dad, we do the same thing. We take his big H, we take his little h, and we're going to divide them up, put them on the side of the Punnett square, big H, little h, boom. Now we've set up our Punnett square. So we're just showing how their chromosomes are being separated out, how their alleles are being separated out, and now we're going to predict the offspring. So let's look through it. If we cross these two together, we're going to have offspring with big H, big H. What will they look like? Well, they've got two normal hemoglobin alleles. Their red blood cell is going to be absolutely normal. That's a good, that's a good thing, right? Let's say big H goes with little h here, and the same thing will go here. For both of these kids, they're basically identical to their parents in this department, right? So they're also going to have normal red blood cells, Normal hemoglobin proteins, wonderful. The last 25%, 25% chance that their offspring will have two recessive, which is coding for an abnormal hemoglobin, which actually leads to this condition called sickle cell anemia. So what their blood cells will look like is this sickle shape, this little half moon, and it's actually pretty dangerous, okay? So that is basic, basic Mendelian genetics, okay? We're separating out the alleles from mom and dad based on their genotypes, predicting what the offspring would say. So what we would say is, hey, well, 25% of the offspring will be big H, big H. 50%, because two out of the four 
50% will be big H, little h, and 25% will be little h, little h, okay? Now, we can also say their phenotype. So this is all the genotypes. Let me actually write this down. These letterings are called genotypes. It's basically just saying, what do their genes look like? What do their alleles look like in letter form? Whereas their phenotypes, so phenotypes would be the physical trait that they're expressing. So that's how I remember phenotype is physical trait. So the phenotypes for big H, for example, big H, big H here would be a normal red blood cell like I drew. Whereas the big H, little h would also be the normal red blood cell. Then the little h, little h would be the sickle cell. So these would all be the phenotypes, all of these guys, okay? So therefore, we can predict both genotype and phenotype based on what we put in these Punnett squares. So as a brief review before we move on to the next part, you're made of cells. You have DNA, the blueprint for proteins, therefore your traits, all organized into chromosomes, which are the chapters of DNA. You've got 23 pairs of them. You get one of each from mom and dad. Based on that, you also get different alleles, which are variations of their genes. So for example, genes are the segments of DNA that actually code for that protein or code for that trait, but you get variations depending on what you get from mom and dad. The way we show that is through alleles, usually dominant and recessive. This is the basic uh, dealings with alleles. We'll talk about different ones later on. Now, the dominant ones will always be shown, okay? So dominant alleles will always be shown up, whereas the recessive can get masked, but they can show up if it's homozygous recessive, okay? So when we moved on to the Punnett square, we talked about sickle cell anemia, where we have a gene coding for hemoglobin, which gives red blood cells its nice circular shape. If you have a big, a dominant H, that's going to code for a normal protein, a normal trait. But if you have a recessive, it could code for an abnormal shaped hemoglobin. So if you have two parents, both heterozygous, so one big, one little, one dominant, one recessive, they are going to code for a normal hemoglobin, a normal red blood cell. But if they have kids, this percentage of their offspring will have these different genotypes. So 25% will have big H, big H, normal red blood cell. 50% will have big H, little h, normal red blood cell. And 25% would have homozygous recessive, little h, little h, and have the sickle cell trait, okay? This was Punnett Square 101. Go ahead and watch the rest of these videos in sequence to understand the rest of Punnett Squares. We're gonna talk about incomplete dominance. We're going to talk about codominance, X-linked traits, and blood types. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please drop any comments in the uh, comment section below. Please subscribe and like. I appreciate your help and thank you for watching.